Here's an equation that looks intimidating at first glance. We have x appearing in the exponent of five different bases, and our job is to find all real values of x that make this statement true. What makes this problem fascinating is that beneath this apparent complexity lies a surprisingly elegant structure. When faced with an equation like this, where direct algebraic manipulation seems difficult, a natural first step is to test some simple values. This isn't random guessing, it's strategic exploration to build intuition before diving into the theory. Let's start with x equals zero. Remember that any non-zero number raised to the power of zero gives us one. The left side gives us three, while the right side gives us two. Since these aren't equal, x equals zero doesn't work. Let's move on to x equals one. The left side adds up to 33, but the right side only gives us 27. So x equals one doesn't work either. Now let's try x equals two. When we square each base, the left side becomes 10 squared plus 11 squared plus 12 squared, while the right side becomes 13 squared plus 14 squared. And remarkably, both sides give us exactly the same value. We've found our first solution. So x equals 2 definitely works. But here's the key question that makes this problem really interesting. Is this the only solution? Or could there be others hiding out there? Before we dive into rigorous analysis, let's build some intuition by visualizing what's happening. We'll plot the left and right sides as separate functions and see where they intersect. Let me set up a coordinate system so we can see how these functions behave. First, here's the left-hand side of our equation in blue, the sum of 10 to the x, 11 to the x, and 12 to the x. Now, let's add the right-hand side in green, 13 to the x plus 14 to the x. The solutions to our equation are exactly the points where these curves meet. And sure enough, we can see them intersecting at x equals 2. Let's take a closer look at this intersection point. You can see how precisely these two exponential curves meet at exactly the point where x equals 2 and y equals 365. Look at how these curves behave. The green curve grows much more steeply because it involves larger bases. This visual evidence suggests they won't meet again, but a picture isn't a proof. To be certain, we need to analyze this more carefully. Now that we've examined the intersection closely, let's step back to see the bigger picture before moving on to our rigorous proof. To prove uniqueness rigorously, we'll use one of the most powerful tools in mathematics, calculus. The key insight is to analyze the difference between the two sides of our equation. By moving everything to one side, we transform our problem into finding the roots of this expression. Now, here's a clever trick to simplify the analysis. Notice that 12 sits right in the middle of our sequence of bases. If we divide every term by 12 to the x, something beautiful happens. Since 12 to the x is always positive, this division doesn't change our solutions. But look what happens. All our bases are now clustered around 1, which makes the behavior much clearer. Let's call this entire expression f of x. Finding solutions to our original equation is equivalent to finding where this function equals 0. The key insight is to look at its derivative. Using the fundamental rule that the derivative of a to the x is the natural log of a times a to the x, we can find the derivative of our function. Now, here's the crucial observation. The exponential terms are always positive, but look at the logarithmic coefficients. Since 10 twelfths and 11 twelfths are both less than 1, their natural logarithms are negative. So these first two terms are definitely negative. For the last two terms, 13 twelfths and 14 twelfths are greater than 1. So their logarithms are positive. But notice we're subtracting these terms, which makes their contribution negative as well. So every single term in this derivative is negative. This is a powerful conclusion. When you add up a bunch of negative numbers, you get a negative result. This means our derivative is always negative, everywhere. And here's why this matters. A function with a negative derivative everywhere is strictly decreasing. A decreasing function can cross any horizontal line at most once, including the x-axis. This guarantees uniqueness. 
So far, we've proven there can be at most one solution. But mathematics requires us to prove that at least one solution exists. For this, we need to examine what happens to our function at the extremes. As x gets very large, the terms with the biggest bases start to dominate. The negative 14 twelfths to the x term grows fastest and pulls the whole function toward negative infinity. As x becomes very negative, something different happens. The terms with bases less than 1, like 10 twelfths to the x, start growing toward positive infinity and dominate the behavior. The intermediate value theorem is one of those fundamental results that captures an intuitive idea. If you have a continuous path that starts above ground and ends below ground, it must cross ground levels somewhere in between. Since our function is continuous and goes from positive infinity to negative infinity, the theorem guarantees there's at least one point where it crosses zero. Let's bring all the pieces together for our final conclusion. First, we use the intermediate value theorem to prove that at least one solution must exist. Second, our derivative analysis showed the function is strictly decreasing, which means there can be at most one solution. And third, we found by direct calculation that x equals 2 actually works. Combining these three facts, existence, uniqueness, and our specific solution, we can conclude with complete certainty that x equals 2 is the one and only real solution. What I love about this problem is how it demonstrates the power of calculus to provide definitive answers where other approaches fall short. If you enjoyed this exploration of exponential equations and rigorous mathematical reasoning, consider giving this video a like and subscribing for more mathematical adventures. Until next time, keep exploring the beautiful world of mathematics.